Have you ever had that moment where it feels like everyone around you seems to know exactly what they want to do with their life and you just don't? Yep, that was me when I started college. No grand vision, no dream career, just a vague sense that I feel like I should be doing something productive. And you know what? It still sucked seeing everyone around me do all these crazy productive things and I was still just trying to figure out what I wanted to study. Frustrated with myself, I took a shot and made a plan. I decided I was going to do everything I could to get into a PhD program without even caring if I actually wanted to do one. And I didn't even realize it at the time, but this was going to be the best decision I could have possibly made when I had no clue what I actually wanted to do with my life. Because by the time I got to graduation and figured things out, I realized I had the options to get a PhD or get a master's or land a sick job in industry. Hey, I'm Dario, a physics PhD student at the University of Colorado Boulder, and I survived four years of college knowing absolutely no clue what I wanted to do. And today, we are doing story time, where I'm going to walk you through my four insane years of college while driving home the best piece of advice I can possibly give. Pretending you want to do a PhD is the best thing you can do when you have no clue what you want to do. So I went to undergrad at the University of Buffalo, and I also am from Buffalo, so I lived at home throughout undergrad. And normally this would be like, yay, saving money, because I get to live at home. But no, it was COVID, so I was absolutely miserable. All my classes were online, so I just spent a lot of time pretending to pay attention to Zoom lectures, doing homework, and literally nothing else. I mean, I was just a bum doing schoolwork all day, and, and actually I was playing Minecraft and Rocket League a lot. I was doing computational physics at the time because, I don't know, I thought physics was cool from high school, but I also knew I wanted to do something more applied, so I said, why not try computer science stuff? But did I know what I actually wanted to do with this degree? No, no, no clue. I just thought it sounded cool. And time was basically a blur at this point until halfway through my spring semester when I decided to make the one of the best decisions of my entire life and check out the school's small rocketry club, UB Seds. And when I mean check them out, I mean I hopped on a Zoom call to hear their spiel because it's still COVID. But it was a small group of like six or seven students. And even though there was no engineering that could really be done at the time, I still found time to show up some of their game nights that they were having. But most of them were seniors who were graduating at the end of the semester. And when the end of the semester came, it was time to do e-board elections. And I, being a dumb freshman, noticed that there were only two seniors that weren't graduating in the club. So I saw an opportunity. I was gonna run for VP of the club. Now you might be like, why? Why, Dario, would you do that? That's such a dumb thing to do. You know nothing about the club. Um, I also knew that no one was gonna run against me, stupid. And I also kind of lacked any life purpose at this moment since I was just sitting at home all day. So I was just really excited to have something of importance to do in the future. And my speech must have been real good because I won unanimously. Um, VP Dario, is Dario here? Yeah, I'm right here. I, I can't believe I'm showing this. Yeah. Introduce um, oh, yourself to it. Yeah, uh, I'm Dario. Uh, I'm <laughs> so in the running for uh, vice president, and I'm also in for secretary. Um, I Obviously, I love science and space and everything else, like everyone here. Uh, in high school, I was in the tech club for four years. Along okay, we're done. we're done. We're done. We're done. We're <laughs> done. All right, yeah. So I won. And this basically sets the scene for the rest of my undergrad and how I will soon come up with my grand plan. And the, probably the last other important thing to point out is that I wasn't the only new club member that ran unopposed. So did the president. This will be important soon. Sophomore year is when some people think you should have figured everything out now. Well, I certainly didn't. In the summer, I changed my major from computational physics to engineering physics, meaning I essentially subbed out all the CS stuff and put in a bunch of EE stuff. I was definitely super busy now with the full slate of classes and starting out as VP of this rocket club, so I have to make sure I do not overdo it, right? Well, to make matters worse for myself, if being VP of a club I had never stepped into the lab of, straight off the freshman chopping blocks, wasn't dumb enough, I was also asked if I wanted to be avionics lead of the club. Why? Because there were only like seven people in the club, and I was the only one who had relations to EE stuff, even though I like just been introduced to Ohm's Law. But sure, why not? I'll just add on trying to figure out how to design electronics for a rocket while I have to do everything else. Now, while I was learning what a data sheet was for the first time, there was some major turmoil in the club. The president, who, as I mentioned, was also a new club member, was doing an awful job. And I mean so bad that we actually had to go out of our way to remove them. Which makes dumb, stupid, and clueless me club president. Ha <laughs> ha.
I have seized power just as I had planned. Yeah, I'm kidding. I am so, so screwed. And let's not forget that I have an avionics team consisting of just me at the moment to run. Main goals of the avionics team are essentially to deploy the parachutes when the rocket hits Apogee and to keep track of its location at all times so when it lands, it can be recovered. And how do you do this? Could not tell you at this point. That is literally all I knew. So I spent a lot of time trying to convince random ass people in my classes to help me figure this out. But it turns out it's kind of hard to convince random people of your vision when they ask like, so what's the plan? And all you got is, hmm, great question. But hey, I was stuck with this and I was stressed about it, but I decided to stick with it. And I would say I probably got around 40 people to show up to my meetings throughout the year and only three of them actually stuck around. But you know what? That was actually all I ended up needing because I'm going to fast forward through about six months of up and ups and downs. And we did it. We actually did it. And this is what we made. This bad boy is a flight computer. And this is the first thing I ever made outside of class. Before this, if a teacher didn't directly tell me some piece of information, it did not exist in my brain. I was so proud of this little piece of shit. This sparked something in me where I was like, man, you know, I should kind of like solving cool problems like this. Maybe I want to do this more. I was also really lucky to be surrounded by such smart people who had pushed me to be better throughout the year, and they told me about their current involvements in research. So I was kind of like, screw it, let's try that. So by the end of my second year, I'd set up my first research project to take on over the summer. And that little piece of shit I mentioned, here's what happened with that. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Previous rocket settling down safely right around the takeoff point. Pretty cool, right? Uh, so much insanity went into making that happen, but that's a story for another time. Let me know in the comments if you want to hear about it. Damn, it was junior you already. I was kind of in the groove now in my rocket club and I was loving that research I started over the summer. But I was really thinking now, man, what do I want to do after I graduate? Well, I was also applying to a lot of internships at the time and it was after submitting an application to NASA JPL that I knew I'd never hear back from that something finally clicked to me. I was already setting myself up to be a good PhD applicant, which means I was setting myself up to be a great master's applicant, which means I was also in a good position to get a solid industry job. And this is where I finally realized what I should be doing for the rest of my undergrad. I need to pretend I want to get a PhD and do everything I can for that while I figure out which of those three routes I want to do, because that still leaves me all of my options open. So while junior year was miserably busy, I kept up with my research and I kept making those rocket circuits. And after more hard work, I presented my research at the physics conference APS in Las Vegas, improved the avionics systems from this to this, and grew the entire rocket team from like five idiots to a lot more idiots. I also finally understood the power of connections, telling other people what you want to do, and just cold emailing people. So did this help me decide what I wanted to do? Kind of. I would say what really sold it for me was what I did the summer after my junior year. I got into some RU programs at a few places and decided to go from Buffalo to LA for the summer to do research at USC. And this was easily the best summer of my entire life. I don't know if I will ever top that. Like this sold doing a PhD for me. And if you don't know what an RU is, or know if you should do one? The answer is yes. Like you should so, so do it. It is so worth it. So let me know if you wanna hear more about that. But then that was the end of my junior year. Senior year, yeah. Damn, after everything I had gone through, I was now in a great place to apply to PhD programs. So I spent my entire fall researching schools, emailing professors, and filling out my applications. After submitting all of the applications just minutes before the deadline, like a good student, I kind of felt a sense of accomplishment for once. And I would say I'd be able to finally breathe now, but I'd be lying to you because I now had to stress over my applications I just submitted. Come the spring semester, I got a bunch of rejections, but I also got a bunch of acceptances. Yay! Do you also remember the application I sent to JPL I knew and never hear back from? Well, I've been doing so much networking with professors and grad students 
that one random Tuesday, one of the professors got back to me and connected me with someone at JPL and they wanted me to help them with their research. I also got some good job opportunities lined up if I wanted. It was like everything was falling into place right at the end of undergrad. The rocketry team was also killing it too and new kids kept pouring through the door wanting to learn. I no longer needed to go to my classes and harass random people to join. And my avionics team was also doing some crazy cool stuff I could have never have imagined making when it was just me a few years ago. The whole team also made just such a sick ass rocket. And after another amazing rocket launch and I accepted my physics PhD offer at CU Boulder, that was it. I graduated. Yeah! Okay, looking back, my undergrad was a complete roller coaster. I had no clue what I was doing half the time, but somehow things worked out. And that leads me exactly to what I want you to take away from this. If you don't know what you want to do, pretend you want to get a PhD. Not because you'll have to get one, but because it'll force you to do things that will open doors. Research, networking, building skills, putting yourself in a room with really smart people. By the time you figure out what you want to do, you'll have options. I didn't know I was making good choices in my first and second year. I just thought rockets were cool and I surrounded myself with people that pushed me to be better. And that's all you really need to do. Pick something you're interested in, go all in, and let the rest fall into place. So yeah, no grand plan, just saying yes to things that sounded cool, and it turns out that was the best plan I could have had. I hope you all find yourselves on some crazy unexpected journeys of your own, ones that will challenge you, push you, and make you feel like an idiot in the best way possible. And for me, I look forward to sharing my next journeys with you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.